In this video, we are going to be discussing runtime errors, uh, what they are, how to find them, and also how to fix them. A runtime error is similar to a logic error in that all code is syntactically correct, but we experience an error when the program is actually running. Uh, the difference between a runtime error and a logic error is that in a logic error, our program will still compile and, or not compile, excuse me, run successfully without any errors um, other than, you know, we'll get the, the wrong results. Whereas a runtime error will actually come up in the box letting us know that there was an error. And so an example of this will be something like if we were to try and divide by zero. So let's go ahead and we'll have int num1, and we'll set equal to six, and we'll have num2, and we'll set that equal to zero. And then if we just go ahead and output num1 divided by num2, an end line at the end. Now, if we build this by pressing F7, we can see that our build succeeds. Build one succeeded. And when we go to our error list, we have zero errors and zero warnings. But upon actually running this, we get this. Console application 2.exe has stopped working. A problem caused the program to stop working correctly. Windows will close the program and notify you if a solution is available. Not super helpful to us, but we'll click close program and it says press any key to continue, meaning we've hit the end of our program. It's, it's ready to be terminated. And so that was our first experience with a runtime error. We get that, that box of it stopped working. We can just click cancel and get out of there because we know that it's all done. That whether we've hit a runtime error, nothing else good is going to happen. And so fixing this is the same as fixing a logic error in that we, it requires us to just look through the code and find out exactly where this took place. And so one way of doing this is we can actually put a cout statement right here saying above the division and one after saying after the division. And then if we run this, then we can see above the division actually happened. But then the next line did not. So that lets us know that the problem takes place directly after above the division. And so we can see here that it must be this line that's causing the problem. We can look, we can see six divided by, oh, we're dividing by zero. That's our problem, let's divide by six. And then we go ahead and run it and we'll output one. And now we know that it has worked and we have fixed our runtime error successfully. Um, in previous versions of Visual Studio, so before Visual Studio 2013, um, it was possible to have other types of runtime errors, such as if we just had int swap and set int num1 equal to swap like this. So swap doesn't equal anything. So we're trying to set num1 equal to a variable that doesn't have anything inside of it. But now in 2013, upon building, this actually gives us a syntax error saying redefinition, multiple initialization, meaning that, um, excuse me, not int num1, that's why that's giving us that error. So if we build this, then it will give us one failed, and it says uninitialized local variable swap used on line 10. And so now this treats it as a syntax error. The Visual Studio 2013 compiler actually searches for this directly um, and won't even let us run our code because it guarantees that this would have been an error. Um, so this is one of the more common errors that we will run into. There are more advanced things in computer science and in programming that can cause a runtime error. Um, and one of the best tools for sorting that out is the debugger, which we will have another video on. Um, but for right now, the important thing to remember is that a runtime error is an error that occurs when all code is syntactically correct, but there is an issue that causes the program to terminate while running. Um, specifically, it is not a logic error which will return results and just incorrect results, but it will prevent the program from actually running.